Hey guys, Paul SC here. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're surviving this lockdown. Uh, hope you're going to have a happy Easter over the weekend. Tabletop Simulator Infinity League going really, really well. We're finally into round four. It's going to be the mission supplies. We just completed round three firefight. In this video, I'm going to give you the latest updates and announcements about what's going to be happening going into round four with the new map. So please watch this video if you're involved in the league, especially the scheduled side of the league. Alright, so how are the matchups and everything going? Let me just minimize this down here and we'll have a look. So, round three has just concluded. Um, having said that, there are three matches which have not finished yet. Um, because it's Friday night for me and uh, we're about to hit the weekend and the time zones are going to roll around and people are going to be wanting to know um, who they're playing over this weekend because this is the best time to fit in the games. I do need to work out the draw now. I'd prefer to do that, and I can't do that unless I work out, you know, what the results are. So we'll talk about in a moment. We'll talk about that in a moment as to how we're going to be handling that. But as you can see, I'm keeping track of each round in the spreadsheet. Obviously, this is a public spreadsheet, and you can see who's winning, who's losing, who's playing each other, what factions are playing, as always, and uh, who the top of the tables are. Then we come to round four pairings where we have the spreadsheet here with the uh, latest round for round four uh, on supplies. And there are six people who are clearly undefeated at the moment. So we've got Killer Whales versus Sidonim, and then Hakiman versus Methuselah, and then Dev versus Lakazov. These guys haven't played each other, and they are all undefeated. Now, if you think through the maths, um, after this round of supplies... Uh, as long as there are no draws, and there could be draws, uh, supplies is a mission where you could get a draw if neither player gets any boxes or they both get one each and no other uh, you know, auxiliary objectives. Um, but if that doesn't happen, we may have three people who are undefeated and then everybody else is, you know, lost at least one game as we go into our fifth and final round. And what that may mean is that the, the two out of three undefeated players who play against each other will result in one final person standing, but the other person who was undefeated, who just got another opponent uh, elsewhere in the field, they may go on to win their game rather than losing it, uh, leaving us with two undefeated players um, after the league round five. So that could happen. If that does happen, I really want to have a bonus round of some kind. I'm not 100% decided yet as to whether I'll ask everybody to play a sixth round, or it will only be a game between those two people, or whether it'll be optional, or whether I have like a, a section of the top eight or top ten do it. But um, please continue giving me your feedback about what you would like to see as far as that goes. Um, I think everybody can agree on the fact that what we'd like to do is identify who the top two players are at the end, make them play against each other, schedule a live stream so everybody can tune in on Twitch uh, where I'll be commentating on the game. Um, my mic will be broadcast to Twitch, uh, but it'll be muted in Discord so I'm not annoying the players. And you'll be able to hear what the players are saying, but obviously they won't be hearing, hearing me accommodate. And we can put that on YouTube, and it will be an event that we can look forward to. But um, it's not going to work as well if we've got, you know, that whole live show following these two people. But there's a third person out there elsewhere who's just continuing to win games, ends up undefeated, and ends up on more points than in the people we were watching. So I'd like it to come down to the top two. Um, I may also ask players going into next round um, if they'd liked me to join their game and do a screen capture and uh, hold on to the footage for a bat rep later. I don't want to put stuff on YouTube too early because obviously you, know, you wouldn't want other people scrutinizing your play and your lists um, you know, before you actually play them. So that wouldn't really be fair. But if I hold on to the, uh, the footage and post it later, that might still make for some good viewing for people who want to see how the games are going at the top tables. So we'll keep tabs on it. What, what potentially could happen, though, is we could get a draw somewhere in the top six, and that'll make it quite easy for me to work out you know, who's going to win and lose um, after that final round. 
Um, but yeah, I, I'm still open to the idea of a sixth round, which is optional for everybody except the top couple of players. Um, the way I'd like to handle a optional round six is that at the start of the game, you roll a dice to determine which mission you're going to play, and it'll be randomized out of the previous five so that you can still have a list which is going to be useful for that mission. And the table will be designed in such a way that um, all of the objectives are present uh, depending on wh which mission you're running, and then you just highlight the ones that um, you're going to actually use depending on whether it's Frostbite or whether it's um, supplies or whatever you're actually going to be running for that particular one. Cool, so um, there's the rest of the leaderboard. Now, about this whole thing of players not finishing their game yet. So we've got um, Tazzy Tiger, um, Akalon, R-Type X, Ross, Castor, Fukushim. The way I'm going to do this is that for the purposes of matchmaking, these guys here these four, uh, Tazzy Tiger, Akalon, uh, R-Type, and Ross, they're all going to temporarily get uh, 0.5 wins. They're going to get a draw, effectively, for the purposes of matchmaking only. What's happened here is that back on the leaderboard, I haven't updated their results yet, and as soon as they do actually finish their games from round three, so once I get Tazzy Tiger having played Akalon and R-Type having played uh, Ross, I will actually go back and retrospectively update their leaderboard, so they will have had results from round three, and then presumably if they finish their round four game in time, they'll actually go into round five um, you know, with a legit score. So that's the way I want to do it. Um, noting that these uh, matches that didn't actually get finished um, are fairly close-ish on the leaderboard, what I've actually done is I've actually just given them each other as opponents. So where we had Tazzy Tiger who was supposed to play Akalong, they've spoken to me, they're going to be playing tomorrow morning, so we will get their result. But I'm just going to say, okay, for round four, um, Tazzy, you can play against R-Type who still hasn't submitted a game, unless you have submitted a game and I'm just a doofus and I haven't recorded it, in which case I apologize. But I don't seem to have, have seen the result for R-Type and, and Ross just yet. Um, so what I've got is I've got Dazzy, Tazzy playing R-Type for round four after he finishes his game with Akalon, and then Ross can play Akalon after that, um, and will then go retrospectively update their scores. So um, what I was originally going to do is basically go, right, um, for the people who get an effective draw, um, if you end up winning your game, it will have meant that the matchmaker's given you a player who's um, maybe not as good as you deserved, whereas if you lose the game, um, it's the other way around. But um, the way I've done it, I feel, is fine. It hasn't really affected everybody else's results. These guys are still middle of the rankings at the moment. They still have the opportunity to move up the leaderboard based on their performance, so I see nothing wrong with that. Hopefully you guys feel the same way about that decision. Um, as for Castor and Fukushim, um, this is the second week in a row that Castor has struggled a bit to complete a game. Uh, Fukushim as well, um, he's been doing okay, but these guys are both at the bottom of the leaderboard um, and haven't won any games. So I'm going to handle this one a little bit of a different way. Because they didn't finish their, their game in round three, they can still have each other for round four, so they've basically effectively got another week to complete their game. And if these guys optionally want to try for a round four score, um, for Castor and Fukushim, if you're listening to this, I will allow you to play anybody in the league. You're at the bottom of the table, it's okay if you play again. even somebody in the unscheduled uh, rankings. For your round four game, I will let you submit a full-on scheduled game against any opponent that you want, so long as you haven't played them before, and we'll count that. So, if I mean, if you can beat somebody um, else out there, it doesn't matter who it is. You can play against me. I'm an easy beat. You guys know that I can't roll. I can't, uh, you know, uh, roll a crit or a armor save to save myself. Um, so play against me if you want to, or anybody else in the unscheduled leaderboard, or whoever you want it, and um, I'll add your result to the leaderboard for round four, but do try and complete your round three game against each other. If you finish your, um, your round three game within 24 hours of me posting this video and you really want to be ranked properly, and the other guys haven't played their games yet, just talk to me about it, we'll work something out, we're friendly, it's kind of casual at the bottom of the table here. I will rearrange it so that you get somebody appropriate, okay? 
So hopefully that makes sense. None of, none of what I've just said here affects anything in the top of the top half of the table, basically. Everybody else here is still good to go. Um, it's really great to see that we're getting some closer matchups now. Um, a lot of you guys I don't really know personally, haven't played against yet, but by now I've actually started to meet people, see people's results, um, yeah, talk to them in chat, and play games against some of you guys. Really cool to see that some of the matchups are looking a lot more appropriate and close, and I'm actually really keen to see the results of some of these games. Killer Whales is right up there. I've actually played against Killer Whales, haven't played against Sidonim. Hakiman, um, doing really, really well. I've actually played him a couple of times. Um, Dev I've played against once, not Lakazov though. Um, and a lot of these other guys here just haven't had a chance to encounter just yet, but keen to at some point. So uh, yeah, looking really, really good. Can't wait to see how you guys go in your round four games. We'll add the results to the leaderboard and just keep going as we have been. Um, now the map is done for uh, round four. It is an left flavored map in terms of the colors. Um, I know that my last couple of maps were really kind of open in terms of the big fire lanes. I've tried to shut that down quite a bit. So if you look in the deployment zone, yeah, you can deploy on top of these one of the little buildings here, but there's a lot of stuff blocking you off. This area of the table here is really kind of congested. There's a, basically a very big, uh, large gray cube here, which you can't even move through, but you can take that building through to, across to the other enemy deployment zone. Um, deployment zones here just don't have a lot of high stuff that you can deploy on. Even this pink box, I mean, you can deploy on that to be able to see anybody crawling across the roof, but they can easily get the height advantage on you, so that is very dangerous. And on this side of the battlefield, you really only have these thin lines here. Um, which isn't going to be that useful for your Nocta for Missile Launcher if they end up coming through this side of the battlefield, right? So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, with the supplies, there is one supply box on the roof. So bear that in mind. You can probably deploy your, um, your, your infiltrator like here and then go grab the box and run away with it and have to deal with other people putting mines and stuff around you know, this, this rooftop area. But only one of them is on the rooftop. The other two are relatively out in the open. You've still got to work for it. And of course, deployment zones don't have a lot of hidey holes. And I like that because I don't want people to um, have too easy a time of it grabbing their supplies and just hiding them in their deployment zones. I want to make it kind of possible to get to the spots at the back. And I do feel like it is reasonably possible for that to happen. So hopefully you guys enjoy supplies and um, continue giving me your feedback. As always, um, the mission is available in the workshop, so um, if you haven't already been doing that, check the um, check my workshop page. Uh, the link will be in the video description to this particular map. Hit the subscribe button, then it's gonna be available in the workshop here within TTS when you load it up. Um, I am continuing to update my, uh, my box here, so if you guys haven't already watched my maps video, remember you can also subscribe to my maps mod, that will allow you to load this room up, right click on the bag, save the bag, I've recently updated the bag with some other stuff, so all of the colored ones here are um, created by Wyrock No Die, but then you've got the brown ones, which are my ones. I've added uh, League Round 4 to that as well. So if they've updated the base version of the mod and you just want to drag and drop the bag into the room to add uh, the Round 4 table, you can now do that. So hopefully I've given everybody everything they need. Um, but continue asking your questions and giving me your comments. And of course, um, Easter weekend, I'm going to be off work for four days. I'll be keen to play heaps of tabletop simulator games with you guys, so don't be afraid to direct message me and ask for a game, especially and uh, preferably if you are in the league yourself, and especially if I haven't played you yet, because I'd rather prioritize people that I haven't had a game against yet. Cool, all right, enjoy round four, guys. It'll be supplies, and uh, get to it. Start posting your games.